This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 374. Time to get geeky talk tech with uh, our friends here in Pittsburgh. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, video producer here in the area. And we got a whole crew with us today. First of us, Dutters. Whoops. Hi. Oh, there she is. Hi, I thought you said Pizzaburg, and I was excited. Pizzaburg. <laughs> Pizzaburg. <laughs> Uh, Dutters is joining us. She's a uh, director of sales and marketing over at the Scare House. Yes, spooky. It's a recovering off season. Yes, never actually recover. Absolutely, She's going. absolutely. And of course, we got the couch full of people. John Chichilla is with us. He's a gadget guru over at Big Bank International. <laughs> John. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just goes yes. Lots of Johns. Yes. How's it going today? <laughs> All right. And also, hey, yeah, they got another one with us. Back on the show, John Carmen is with us. Yeah, it's good to be back. Welcome back of uh, the the one of the one of the old school podcasters. First time in the new studio. First time in the new studio. Thank you for coming. I know I know parking was a little hard outside. Yeah. You're just very popular. But yes. I love the studio. It's worth it. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, like I said, this is the Awesome Cast. This is where we talk about tech things from a Pittsburgh state of mind. And you can check us out on awesomecast.com. Uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the YouTube and the Facebook page. And we're live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern at live.awesomecast.net or on the Facebook page as well you can check out our streaming partners uh where we're over there rivers edge pgh.com they're uh, carrying us saturday mornings at 9 a.m and check out all the other great stuff going on there including our uh, sorgatron media partners fishing without bait also we're over on the 405 media.com where they're airing the show every uh weekday morning five days a week 9 a.m pacific time noon eastern time and you can catch up on your awesome cast there too uh also thanks to our patreon supporters uh at the five dollar coffee club they get the main, the awesome cast gold uh matt weller matt underscore weller one t on the twitter and at the uh fan of the show one dollar level mike fedor uh mike fedor show on the twitter thank you guys for supporting the show and literally helping keep the lights on here and I remind you we do also have uh several other several other levels on the patreon uh of course uh, the uh ten dollar level uh where you guys get the state of the show uh state of the show uh, uh updates throughout the month and uh if you sponsor the 20 dollar executive producer level for a few months we send you business cards and give you an executive producer credit on the show so let's get into our awesome things of the week uh chilla you i i didn't know tesla was doing such small scale things that, that you have here on the, on the docket <laughs> yeah so when they did their announcement was it last week about their their big rig mm-hmm. um their electric semi um, they announced two other small items for purchase. And I'm like, Oh, how much do these cost? So they made a, a replica of the supercharger monument. That's at the Tesla design studio, which is the power bank. Um, I think it's the one, it's one of the links. I'm not sure. Not it's the other one. The other um, one? that's the, that's like the car charger, that one. There you go. So that power bank, um, is nice and compact and small. You can carry it with you. Um, it, uh, recharges like any other portable battery charger um, has an integrated Apple lightning and detachable micro USB. Um, I thought it was pretty cool that you can get kind of a little Tesla device that you can carry around with you for a mere 45 bucks. Um, the other one is the desktop su- supercharger, which looks like I I'm pretty sure it looks like the full size car charger you, you see in certain places. Um, and the desktop supercharger. Amazingly, at the sheets up in Hermitage. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, it, 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 I think this one doesn't ha- come with any USB cables. It just has USB um, ports on it that, that kind of set it on your desk, look cool. And then you can plug any of your devices into it. Both devices are 45 bucks. I'm 
They make an excellent stocking stuffer. Um, I, I think I'm going to order a couple of these, um, at least the desktop superchargers and then probably one power bank. Is there anything special about these other than they the, say Tesla on them? Than they say Tesla on <laughs> them. I mean, is there anything extra special uh, battery wise with these guys? I, no, I don't think there's anything extra special battery wise. Um, I think it's mainly the branding and kind of owning a little piece of Tesla because I can't afford anything else that they make. I don't know. Maybe they have like $15 t-shirts or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But other than that, this is as close as I'm getting to owning Tesla technology for now, for now. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It was to me, it was super cool. And I when I saw them, I, I quickly clicked the link and I was like, oh, they're sold out They're never These were probably some kind of limited run. They're never going to make these again. They sold out in minutes. Oh, well. And it was funny because when I went to look at some of the stuff that I had bookmarked for the show, um, they're back in the ordering uh, status. So um, I'll be ordering these momentarily. Awesome. So go check them out. They're on the Tesla shop. Awesome. Uh, Katie, what is your awesome thing of the week? Shiny foxes. Shiny foxes? <laughs> so they've released another creature from uh, The Last Jedi, and there's these crystal foxes called the Vulptex, and they are super adorable and shiny. Um, they kind of look like a Pokemon, obviously, and they're... They, I really, it's a really interesting story how they brought them to life. There's a cool video down at the bottom. Um, but one of the things they had, they brought in a little dog and they built a suit for it and they covered it with clear drinking straws just to see it run around <laughs> to get the idea of what a glass covered fox would essentially look like. And they really liked the movements and the sound it made. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just picturing this little dog running around in a little suit. But um, yeah, so we have another creature from The Last Jedi and from the sounds of it, it plays an important role in the movie that's awesome they did. that's awesome and uh, have they been in the previews i don't recall seeing it in any of the previews yet i saw it in something yeah it was somewhere somewhere at some time i just noticed you're wearing a last jedi shirt I am. you haven't even seen the movie yet and you no, have a shirt for it I know. I just nobody's seen good. the movie yet yes <laughs> <laughs> i'm just assuming it's good okay all right <laughs> awesome uh and that's a video over on uh, entertainment weekly yeah so you can check out a little bit of the behind the scenes making of. And we'll have that in the notes as well. Uh, awesome. So, uh, John Carmen, what's your awesome thing of the week? You know, I hesitated to do this. I don't want to. I'm not a Black Friday sale guy, but the iPhone sale at Walmart and Target is just too good to pass up. And I've been I, I always put off upgrading my phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I've washed iPhones in the laundry and <laughs> put them in rice and kept using them for years. And um I'm finally going to upgrade because the, the sale is too good to pass up. It's $250 back uh, gift card at Target, $300 gift card at Walmart if you upgrade. I think, I believe at Walmart, it's just Verizon and AT&T. Mm -hmm. And I think Target, I, I'm on Sprint, so I'm going to do Target. But uh, it's the 8, the 8 Plus, or the X. At, at least at Walmart. I think Target is just the 8 and 8 Plus. That's awesome. And, and I feel like Target always does this around the holidays, and it's always an excellent deal. I think we did... Um, iPads is, is Christmas presents, and we saved a bunch of money by by doing that because you buy one get the gift card, and you then buy one <laughs> then get the rest of your gifts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's perfect. This is perfect because I was questioning because I want to get the X because I'm really sick of this guy here, mm. and I wasn't sure where to get it because I kept hoping maybe Verizon would do something like they throw something in if I bought it through them, but right. they're doing nothing besides the Galaxy and the Samsung Eight. I think is another one that they're having a sale on, but nothing to do with the iPhones, which makes me sad. I, no, I was actually I was just at Target mm -hmm. and uh, they said it the sale starts of course Thursday, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that's Thursday at six p.m. They didn't say mm -hmm. what time. Uh, but runs until Saturday. I'm assuming all day Saturday, but it's only in store. Mm -hmm. And then, it, especially with something like the X, it even says in the ad limited qual quantities. So, right. yeah, you might have to kind of deal with whatever is in stock if there's something there. Exactly. So. I'm I'm gonna go eight or eight plus. So, and if if one runs out, I'll get the other one. I don't care. Does mm -hmm. it? But is it only for what's in stock, or can you order? That would make there sense. and then get it shipped. Potentially. So at least you kind of get what you want, still get the discount, mm -hmm. and get it shipped to you when it becomes available. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. And, and, and you know, the you know, it's Black Friday. Um, it always gets really interesting with these sales. I've been looking forward to and hoping I get a chance to to take part of uh, Kennywood has Black Friday sales uh, for their oh, season right. passes, yeah. and I think it's something around fifty five, sixty dollars for a season pass for twenty eighteen. 
So for like the low end, like you at least get an admission, you know, not like the dining pass or anything like that. Well, yeah. And on top of that, they and on top of that, they even have payments. Oh, really? Like you can do like ten month, you know, ten dollars a, a month or a week or something. That's awesome. Until you pay it off, so it's not even a, a giant investment on top of that. So, right. so that that's pretty cool. Which and, is good for a family, right? Because you have to. Buy, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, or even just you know you don't have a big chunk of sixty dollars to drop on this thing, but you want to get a head start on the next season, right? You know, I think that's a really cool thing that they're doing there. I think I've I've heard of that. I know people. I know families that do that every year. And that's I learned about it on the Scarehouse podcast, actually. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> the interview you had on there. Uh, a bit what, ago. what day is that? Uh, Friday. I'm just, I'm Black, just testing Black? you. Friday. He's testing you. What? Oh, oh, the Scarehouse <laughs> yeah. podcast. Oh, yeah. whenever they want to put it up <laughs> these days. What was my live? What day? Was oh, that was house? Friday at noon when oh, you yeah. used to do that back in the day. I should so. just do one from Black Friday at noon on the Scarehouse channel. Be like, this is what everyone's fears are: shopping. Yes. <laughs> and show those like really horrible videos of people just like pounding up against the doors and everything like that it looks like a zombie horde sometimes yeah. mm-hmm. so <laughs> you should take a zombie fra- black friday shopping you're like hands off that's how i'll get the iphone x they, oh there you go <laughs> there you go secret weapons um and uh, so so my thing i and you know all the guys to to audio listeners out there is a very visual thing um this was a video that was put up um let's see jeff baradelli i think this is by the weather channel or something put this up (laughs) it it was going around facebook but basically it's a it's the aerosols hurricane season uh 2017 so uh nasa's between nasa's if this plays here i want to restart this then um between uh nasa's uh, uh uh satellites and everything uh, they're able to kind of track aerosols. So they're talking about dust, uh, salt from, of course, the sea levels and everything like that. It's telling me I need a Flash Player upgrade. <laughs> what? Dun, 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 dun. That's weird, Facebook. Don't do that. But anyways, <laughs> um, so it, it, it's just really interesting. Like, I watched this for about for a few minutes before I even, like, knew that there was audio to it. And it, it's kind of showing the patterns of everything and, and shows you can see the hurricanes uh forming coming off of uh you know the middle of the atlantic ocean and in and, and up and and everything it, it just looks like one of those fluid globes or something um and it was really fascinating to watch and, and kind of you know talking about how they're getting a better I- idea all the time as this technology improves of how like parts of our earth behaves and everything like that and you can see all the kind of sand particles coming off of the deserts in africa and and moving out into the ocean and mixing with uh, uh the ocean salt particles and 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 you know it was pointing out like erm is forming if you're watching the video here um it, it was just you know i'm a big maps person and this just like took it to a whole nother level. What's the time span? I have no idea. Like, if are we watching? Um, lower, it's doing lower about low left corner is doing about a day a oh, second. Okay, yeah. So it, this will start from uh, looks like uh, August 2017 up until oh, the October October 30th. It looks like end of October. They need and to make a screensaver out of that. Global modeling and assimilation. And it's the uh, the Goddard Space Flight Center out of NASA. So a really cool geeky weather thing. If you're into, I, like I said, I watched like half the video before I went and clicked and realized that there was narration to it to tell you what was going on. Um, so you know, it's just a really cool kind of geeky uh, understanding our Earth a little bit better kind of thing. So um, awesome. So uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza. Our friends at Slice on Broadway uh again supporting us for a good while here up the street here in the beachview uh neighborhood as well as carnegie pa and down at pnc park and their new location out in i guess we're calling it the east end east liberty out there as well thank you guys and i love that they reposted their video uh recently of uh when they were trying to they i think they got locked out of the uh of the restaurant one time when they were trying to climb a ladder out back and it just completely that- that never ends well. It did not end well at all. And I think it was the owner, Rico, that was doing it, too. So <laughs> it was kind of fun that they revisited that, because I remember when they first put that on Instagram a couple years ago. So thank you to our neighborhood friends, Slice on Broadway, for supporting the show and uh, feeding our studio guests in here. I've been to the East East Liberty, East Side, whatever we're calling mm-hmm. it now, that location. I've been by it. I haven't been in it yet. Yeah, it's, it's great. 
It uh, it reminds me of my favorite pizza place out uh, on Long Island, actually. And also, I uh, want to give a shout out for Small Business Saturdays happening um, wherever you are. Uh, you know, definitely uh, this Saturday after Thanksgiving, make sure you are uh, supporting your small businesses. But especially, we're doing some cool stuff here in the Beachview area, and uh, including in Sorgatron Media here. Uh, we will be participating in the, in the Beachview Small Business Saturday. Uh, we'll have all sorts of things going on, including a scavenger hunt, a social media scavenger hunt. Uh, there's a holiday boutique and soup sale happening right next door at the uh, Presbyterian Church. Uh, live music uh, will be uh, up here in the neighborhood. Uh, Santa's going to be around the neighborhood. Is that, is that going to be next door at the church as well, Santa? Uh, so drop in. The studio will be open this Saturday after Thanksgiving. You can drop in, see what we're doing here. Uh, take part in the social media scavenger hunt. And then, you know, maybe we'll record a few things. You never know, too. So uh, check you out, guys, here uh, this Saturday for that. So it is Thanksgiving this week, and uh, I know this isn't in the rundown, but I think we've done this the last few years, a uh, kind of what are you thankful for in technology, online, you know, things like that. I know I didn't prepare you guys for this, did yeah. I? I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Thanksgiving, so, you know. Uh, and I want to surprise the guys on the Wrestling Mayhem show today, too, with their, their side, too. Um, but you know, as far as, you know, again, technology or, you know, uh, uh, social media, what are, what are you, th- I guess it's a little hard with social media this, this year, but, uh, what are you thankful for? I was thankful today cause I just realized that you can send boomerangs in, um, Instagram or not Instagram. Yeah. Instagram messenger, like in the direct messaging, I can send boomerangs just for that. The most, the most embarrassing of boomerangs can be sent privately Yes. Now. I was very excited. I was hugging a bag of chicken nuggets that I sent in a boomerang <laughs> earlier. <laughs> dino nuggets. So that was exciting. That's awesome. Are That's you a, a fan of the dino nuggets? I like the Targets. Dino nuggets. Um, uh, I don't know if I've ever had those ones. I had ones they're that really were good. in like a red box. No, they're like, it's Target brand. And yeah, they're really I'll good. Try they're those. like whole grain. and. I, we get the... Um, uh, the the kids uh sesame street i can't remember the name of them yeah go they're, to target. they're good yeah tar- get target brand dino nuggets we're very I'm we're very nugget those. picky <laughs> it's nugget chat welcome to nugget <laughs> chat yes <laughs> what about you chilla what are you thankful for in technology i'm this year? thankful for net neutrality and let's yeah. hope it sticks oh, around. Boy. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty hot, hot hot topic going on today yes so we'll see hopefully hopefully it all works out and we don't have to deal with the, the fast lane and companies being able to to pay or having to pay because I think it's really going to hurt the small guys. Yeah, but I guess we'll we'll see how it pans out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I was just sharing today because we I was actually part of an article they did at WESA mm-hmm. um, here locally uh, about net neutrality and and you know talking about you know hey things like this if you know we as providers would have to start paying more to. You know, hey, we're having trouble with our internet. That we want a faster internet coming mm-hmm. down to us so we can deliver. <laughs> but if we had to pay on top of that to get priority, that'd be a problem for you know a low end startup like us. Mm-hmm. You know, doing these kinds of shows. So I mean, that's a big concern for something like that. So it's how we got this far. It'll be interesting to see like how Facebook and Apple and Google and whatnot can can help with this, right? Because obviously, if you posted to YouTube. I'm guessing Google's going to be on that fast lane. Right, There's, right. They're, they're kind of taking the, care of it for you. Yeah, the restream from, from Facebook, et cetera, those types of things. But how you get that data there and then like if you want to be able to, if you're a startup and you want to be able to compete with the Googles and the Facebooks of the world, it's now just an added cost because you're not going to be able to afford um, getting your data out to people. So, Which um, I mean, it means that you you're either have to lean on a YouTube or... You know, it's down to those big providers are going to become the gatekeepers again. Well, and look at look at how um, I'm not 100 percent sure how Google does it. But I mean, when you look at how Apple does um, podcasts, you're just providing them an XML feed and where your file is. Um, now it's going to be up to those hosting services to to stay on top of their game to to be competitive. So and it's going to come at a cost, which is then going to be tossed down to, I'm sure, the the people. Mm-hmm that want to upload those files and, and have them in that service. So it, it just causes major concern for me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Carmen, what are, what are you thankful for? Uh, man, I wish I had gone first. Uh, I'm thankful <laughs> for the Fitbit watch. Uh, my boyfriend just got a Fitbit watch. He, he's had Fitbits that were just tracking your steps before, but I guess the watch is 
a little more in depth. And mm-hmm. one thing he found out, there's a lot of data, uh, interesting data to find out about yourself. But one thing he found out was he was not eating enough calories. So, so I'm thankful that now I get to eat more. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> and what a perfect time of year to have that what come a, up, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's the most wonderful time of the year. You get to dive in on Thursday, right? Yeah, get some Target Dino Nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Official yeah. sponsor of my podcast will be Target Dino Nuggets. Hashtag Nugget Cash. I love it. Um, I'm thankful for um, kind of the slowing of technology, uh, you know, of, of all things. You know, things like this is not, you know, you got, you know, talk about updating your phones. Like, I'm not feeling the stretch on something like an mm-hmm. iPhone anymore. You know, the Pebble Watch is doing fine. Um, you know, we're we're looking at like computers that we're doing our live streaming uh, uh, situations on, and four years deep, and we don't feel like we need new hardware. Like that kind of slowing of technology, and we don't have to drop another several thousand dollars on something every year to feel like we're keeping up. It seems like it's coming out at the same rate, but we're not. We don't feel a social pressure. To right, operate. right. Like a little bit, a little bit maybe socially for like an iPhone thing, like. That new iPhone looks nice. Those new Samsung phones look nice, right? Like I, I, I kind of, I kind of like was, you know, Dart and I towards my friends that had the, uh, the, the what was it the Notes? No, not the Note. Uh, the, uh, the, the Samsung Seven Edge with a nice curved screen and everything like that. Like that was a nice looking phone. But still, it's like I have enough to get stuff done, right? And it's not, it's not that push. And even when you do upgrade, it, there's not as much pressure to upgrade to the latest. A lot of people are going with the eight. I, th- I believe the target sale is actually for includes the sevens. Mm-hmm. So you know, people are still upgrading to an older model. And I think it was telling that they are still selling six S's. Yeah, which is where I'm at. And that that was the big call for me. That was a big kind of like, wait, you have the phone that they're still selling to people. Right, mm-hmm. right. You're not that behind. Mm-hmm. As long as this holds up, you're probably going to be okay for another six months to a year, right? And and it's kind of nice to not be in that, oh, it's September, it's time to upgrade grade my phone. Oh, I have to incur that cost, or I have to uh, add that extra 30 bucks to my bill every month for the next 18 months. Right, exactly. You know? And when you're shopping for everyone else at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think it's a slow technology, or do you think it's being more efficient with the way they upgrade the code? all the work that goes into it. Cause I, I remember back to, I think we're back to that cycle where they're re-optimizing and making things more efficient. Cause I remember one of the things that was uh, something that turned me on to the, the concept of the Mac was every OS, you got another half hour of battery life. You got f- faster capabilities. And I mm-hmm. feel like we're back into that. Let's, let's get back to our roots and let's really make things work and optimize everything i really feel like it's a maturity of those platforms Mm -hmm. like the phone platform iphone android is mature it's not going to go that far it's not going to have a giant leap until you get something out of nowhere like a iphone x right before the iphone x 10 whatever um is there much difference between the six seven or eight really other than spec bump, better camera, better, you know, you know, this and that, you know, it, it, it better speed. But really, it still does a lot of the same things. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a lot that made me kind of miss the seven. There's kind of not much, except maybe I want a bigger phone for the eight. I'm actually dreading the loss of the headphone jack. So it's not that bad. <laughs> I, yeah, I know, but but still, is it know. also that uh, a wider group of people can afford the iPhone now? And whereas a, at first it might have been more early adopters mm-hmm. who would upgrade at every opportunity and it's, wait in line. It's easier for mom to get one now. Now it's yeah. everyone and their kids have one, and mm-hmm. and their kids can't be upgrading every every new iteration. Well, I think even that we're seeing deals at Walmart for the iPhone X. That's new. I mean, at what point was Walmart really keeping up with the technology? Right. And this is this is something new for them. Even just carrying Verizon is, is a big new thing for them. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes over the next few years. Yeah, I see an iPhone's discounted at Walmart. It just blows my mind these <laughs> days, of course. So. And they have the best deal. Like, how ridiculous is that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's not a because we would always like kind of laugh at the uh, Black Friday deals for for uh, Apple stores. 
Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. here's thirty dollars off this fifteen hundred dollar. Right, right. You know, it's like really, what did that? What did that do for anything? Thirty dollars at an Apple store versus three hundred dollars at a Walmart. Yeah. You can buy yeah, yeah. the Walmart for three hundred dollars. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, John, tell me about the Hollow Player One. What is this? Which oh me yeah oh sorry Carmen <laughs> two of us. he's chilla so that yes yeah, it's, it's uh VR well it's the first actual hologram tool that you don't need a headset for ooh and it's in really early stages it's bad resolution it's low resolution right now mm. it's mostly for developers um and they haven't really done anything with it it's a startup and they're looking for. Well, the article I read, the author was looking forward to the first game development using this technology. Uh, but it, it's a whole new playing field. We're looking at actual uh, hologram technology that you can interact with your your body. And it looks like it's a sort of uh, glass reflector kind of situation, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it looks like it looks like a little bit like that old. Have you ever seen the old time? Uh, what was it time splitter or something? Uh, hologram like that. You know, the arcade old Sega game. game? Oh, yeah, I the old Sega that. one. <laughs> it was like a laser disc hologram game, mm-hmm. time traveler or something, where you were like the cowboy, and it's it's just as bad as Dragon Slayer. Um, yeah, no, that looks that looks interesting. So it'll be kind of a pop up kind of thing. Uh, HDMI reliant. Uh, it says it's uh, costing uh, seven hundred. Uh, two versions, I think. Oh, one, I see. There's yeah. one. It's HDMI reliant to cost seven hundred fifty dollars in the premium computer version cost three thousand dollars right so that, i guess the 750 is just is like a monitor i don't know who's who would buy this now except for a developer who's gonna no no this is future future yeah. thinking right so awesome uh chilla you 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 want to buy two of this next thing right um which one the is it echo the, the echo oh yes so uh, no i want i don't i want four of them four of those ones four Please. of these so what are these guys so um echo b known for their uh thermostats announced that and it sounds like there's a pilot program and i can't figure out how to get engaged in it but they uh they're offering a light switch that has Alexa built into it. And when oh, I geez. say Alexa's built into it, I mean, you there's mean, a you, speaker you, you, you mean and echo, a microphone. You mean echo. So you stop waking up my, uh, oh, my, sorry, my yes. echo in the room. Yes. And everybody a, out there. A train's built in. Yeah. Um, so it puts the echo in anywhere where you want to put this light switch. Hmm. So not only could you control the smart switches, but you're also putting Alexa. Sorry. In every room. Um, oh, there she is. <laughs> there she is. You woke her up. Um, and I like this idea because I've already thought about putting dots mm-hmm. around the house. Um, and this kind of gives me a smart light switch along with giving me the echo capabilities ac- across the house. Because the idea, you want to be anywhere and just like Star Trek, just be able to say, computer, do this. Well, that and... The other thing that we've been talking about, the other reason to put dots around the house is almost like a built-in intercom system because you can do the drop-in and, and mm. kind of use that. Now it's built right into the light switch, um, which I think is perfect. So, uh, yes, I want four of these. <laughs> because cause you need to get that that chilla house. Yes. It, well, I can have one. I, wanna, I want two upstairs. Mm-hmm. Then I want one down on the main level and then one in my basement. That's my plan. That'd be awesome. And then one in the garage, so I need five. I this feels this. like a, he's just reading <laughs> off a Christmas list now. <laughs> By the way, if you get that gift card at Target for buying your <laughs> yes. iPhone, Shiloh would like uh, four of these Echo Bees. And it's the uh, Echo Bee Switch Plus, right? Yes. You guys want to look it up? That's great. We need to be big enough that we can make an Amazon wish list. Yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Mine will be Dino Nuggets. Chilla will be. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's only for, for, for attractive girls playing Twitch, I yeah. think. That's, <laughs> that works out. Um, <laughs> Katie. T- speaking of video games, t- tell me, tell me why I'm going to be getting into Animal Crossing that I've been trying to avoid because I'm really worried about it. Uh, Amazon Crossing Pocket Camp is now on I mean, iOS. Animal Crossing. Yeah, Animal Crossing. No, you said you said Amazon Crossing. Amazon Crossing. Yes, that's my new game. Amazon Crossing Pocket Camp. Uh, Am- Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is now on iOS and Android a day early. So exciting. Mm. Um, if you played Animal Crossing, it's very similar. You're essentially you're plopped down at a camp for this particular visit. And you get to do things, have different tasks, interact with other people in your little camp area. 
and there's always you buy little leaves and things will happen faster but it's it's if you're a fan of animal crossing it sounds like you will enjoy it and it's like a freemium mm-hmm. kind of thing it's 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 like you're kind of raising animals right yeah well it's kind of you have critter you're a critter <laughs> you're a critter and aren't, you're... You, aren't you a critter in animal crossing i don't know it's been so long since I played Animal Crossing. I thought it was like a Tamaguchi, but like with little animals on your Nintendo DS and now on your iPhone. I, I don't know. It's bad. It's been too long. You live amongst the animals and live in a generally chill existence. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's the description? Yeah, yeah. I was just reading one of the other descriptions of it. <laughs> I guess I, I've always pictured Oregon Trail. Oh. Mm, maybe, kind of. I, I, I thought they're crossing something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I didn't think that was a functional term in that. Oh, but but you got like a campsite and you build things for your campsite, like guitars and amps. It looks like and fun things. You haven't been camping, have you? Apparently not. Not like this. <laughs> <laughs> not the Nintendo way, apparently. No, but, but it's good, it's just kind of like a relaxing, fun game. Good to see Nintendo still going. Like I said, I've been playing mostly Mario Run because mm-hmm. they, they uh, updated with like some new kind of levels, this Remix 10 thing they have going on, and I'm just addicted to it. Um, but, uh, but but good to see. And I heard they're not happy with how Mario Run went. Yeah, I heard that too, and it like, surprised didn't make en- me. It, yeah, they didn't make enough money because it was... You know, it wasn't a freemium thing. It was a... You downloaded it, and then you really had to pay $10 to buy the game. And I guess you can buy coins, but there's not much reason to. When I feel like you, anything you would want to buy coins for, you could sit there and play and earn because most yeah. of it's to build a monument. And yeah, you're building all these all these things, and and it's it's not or not even building. You just like get things to put in your kingdom, and you grow the kingdom by getting more toads and and everything like that. So yeah, there's not that additional thing like like Pokemon was, which really isn't Nintendo. It's actually the Pokemon company is actually something separate, but uh, but still like the the see they're going through you know forward with something like this is pretty cool. So so Tesla did a truck, <laughs> and immediately when I see this truck, I think of the self driving trucks from Logan, which happens about fifteen years in the future, because uh, <laughs> because yeah, it kind of looks like it. Uh, so so Tesla unveiled these. Uh, Elon Musk pulled up in one of these, and they had the new Roadster in the back of it, like like Knight Rider style, apparently. Uh, and it, it, they're going to have a, a pretty good range on these. They're super sleek. Uh, it's the most badass-looking truck you're going to see out there. You're going to notice these when they get on the road. Um, they have, they said, they, 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 they have already orders for 2019, for these guys and of course they're going to need to uh be able to hook up to superchargers um all over the country for something like this 500 miles of range and more aerodynamic dynamic than a supercar so tesla's moving forward still they seem like they really took into the account like what the drivers were asking for because you can actually stand up in the cab so you mm-hmm. don't have to go outside to stand up and, and, and so they really did their research yeah, on here, here's a picture of, of the cab is so so you're not going to get a buddy there you're no, no no more hitchhikers no more um because there, there's a lot of tandem drivers i think a lot and uh it, it charges in about a half an hour for that 500 mile range wow i think half an hour gets you 400 is it, I think, oh, yeah, it wasn't full, a full i think full charge is 500 okay but still i mean that's that's, that's not, not bad, bad that's yeah. a, that's a truck stop that you're going to have to stop anyways after 500 miles of driving, probably way before that, right? Uh, so as long as these are kind of mapped down, there's enough superchargers out there. No sleeping quarters yet, but that they might add them to the next. Okay. Makes sense. It's a 1.0. It looks pretty slick for yeah. a uh, 1.0. And they have at least one functional one because they drove it on stage. So, uh, so, so, Shilla... Are you going to get the mini version of the truck <laughs> for they, your desk you know, as be, well? It'd be kind of cool if they had like a little mini version that, it, like a rechargeable remote control car. Can I get the one. like? Can I get the, like the little Optimus Prime toy size version of it or something like that? So, I can I can roll my little matchbox out the back. Mm-hmm. Do you think the full one would be over the top? The what? The full truck. The full truck would be over the top. Are you getting one? No. <laughs> Just to drive around town? Yeah. For rush hour? You wouldn't have to pay for gas. No. I sure do. Why? So, have they done buses yet or talked about doing 
Not that I'm buses. aware of. Because that's it surprised me with with the Hyperloop and and some of the other stuff he's talked about. I'm surprised he hasn't moved into the. Well, it seems like buses would be right in between. You went from the Hyperloop to trucking, kind of skipped over yeah. public transportation. Uh, yeah, I thought that. Uh, where's that on his list? How do I, how do I get on his wish list? Mm-mm. Have you seen? So the Hyperloop is 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 like the tube thing, right? Yes. So there was a TED interview with him from I think February, and they were talking about this 3D tunnel system under LA they wanted to build. That basically your car pulls up to it like the side of the road. It's an elevator that goes down, and your car kind of just lands on a skate. And the skate takes you to the next place on this like system of roads underneath LA. Where the hell did that come from? Like a fast car wash. Yeah, kind <laughs> of. Yeah. And then you're just all these cars on skates. So they're all, you know. They should also have a car wash as part of it. <laughs> while you're at it, right? And why, not, why not in a car detailing while we're at it too, right? Really quick car wash, yeah. That'll be interesting. That To me, that's still an interesting concept. And in how do you get around the the backup of an off ramp right because you can't have every car i mean cars are gonna have to pull off wherever and get go right. back up an elevator and there's mm-hmm. gonna be like what's the off ramp yeah type situation there and it, what does it do to back up congestion yeah i don't and, know about the off ramp but the on ramp is it, it elevators down and then it merges into traffic with the other skates and again everything is just kind of interoperable so you said la yeah, and traffic's moving so slow in LA already. You have plenty of time to get on an elevator, exactly. Go up and down, exactly. So, so I I don't know if that's even feasible, uh, cost wise or anything like that. But it's something they were talking about and proposing, and they had a pretty cool three D markup. I feel like Chilla's bus idea is more feasible <laughs> at this point than, than massive tunnels under, right. underneath massive big underground cities. skate tunnels. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have a tunnel to, from Pittsburgh to at least like Oakland by now. Apparently, he's got like a company that's working on the burrowing technology. So, so now he has big machines that burrow. He yeah. has so, skate tunnels. Again, he has loops. He has. He I mean, he has, has cars and and big rigs. But why has, can't we get a bus? Right. He has everything that a supervillain needs. I was going to say, <laughs> is it the Foot Clan? <laughs> is he Shredder? He has a techno drum. He definitely has a techno drum. Oh, he has to. Elon Musk techno drum. Well, when uh, Elon Musk starts taking over the world, uh, apparently Chilla, or I'm sorry, Carmen, um, there's an escape pod from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, I was. I, what the hell was, is this thing? I was playing with this being my awesome thing of the week, but it's it's not awesome. It's really kind of scary, stupid. actually. It's what, stupid. What yeah. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. It's it because there's one of them right okay. now. Oh, oh no, okay. I mean, they yeah they they've made one and no one's gonna buy. Well, Elon Musk might buy it. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's just a metal pod that blocks supposedly blocks any electronic interference. It's, and, it's a Faraday cage, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And do people know what that is? I had to Google that. Like, is that a thing that people That's know? I don't. I did not know what that was. And, well, which is a, a thing that blocks like cell signals and everything. Yeah, like that. I've never been in one or had to be in one well you probably have i mean pittsburgh <laughs> buildings kind of tend to be faraday cages right yeah that makes sense yeah yeah my bedroom actually is a faraday cage. i had no idea i slept in a faraday cage but there you uh, go. yeah so uh i don't know why kfc of all places has created this and has the colonel big statue of the colonel kind of hugging you and uh you know i guess you're supposed to go in there and eat chicken and not be bothered and eat chicken I, it's not where i would mindfully, be eating my chicken mindfully eat chicken well why can't people just turn off their electronic devices versus paying ten thousand dollars? Is my question. Because it doesn't have a drumstick handle. Yeah, there's a drumstick. <laughs> oh, is that handle, where the ten thousand yeah. dollars comes in? Yeah, okay. it really Very looks realistic. like a drumstick. I know, yeah. it does. It's gross. Like I wouldn't want to grab it. <laughs> I'd use a napkin. This is gonna be greasy. <laughs> that is so weird. A KFC is. These are the ones that they had. Didn't they have a some kind of internet laptop tray or something like that? Yeah, they, like they had a, a Bluetooth, like I thought an, they had a Bluetooth like a, speaker tray or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was like some other country they were they were trying this thing. And it was real, real super weird. This might be the least usable of their I mean KFC keeps coming up with these I guess we'll call them inventions. Uh they have a dream kernel pillowcase. So you can <laughs> sleep on the kernel's face. 
<laughs> so I don't know what you know. Everybody, on your scale of usability. <laughs> everybody just leans into the weirdness these days. And I, I don't know about this. I was also excited because the article was written by someone named Ashley Carmen. <laughs> so there's not it's not a, a common name. So I that's that reminds me of something I wanted to talk to you about. You well, I'm a... assuming, yeah, that she's probably my wife. OK, uh, yeah. OK. You you had a really interesting Twitter situation come yeah. up here. I, that, that was something I was not thankful about. So <laughs> when we when I'm sure we're going to get a lot of searches for John Carmen on this show this week. Yeah. And we'll probably get some. Uh, I'm realizing at, at this moment that we're probably going to get some interesting comments, too. But yeah, probably from Bobby Cherry. Probably sure. from Bobby Cherry, sure. <laughs> but there is another John Carmen that there's, came up on election day. There's a few if you search Twitter. I do yeah. come up first, which is, I guess, awesome. Normally that would be awesome. Hey, you're uh, a man of the internet, so that makes sense. I've just been there longer, that's all. Yeah. And, yeah. and the the John Carmen, the misogynistic uh New Jersey politician John Carmen, which if you read my bio on Twitter, it says I'm not the misogynistic New Jersey politician. That didn't stop people though from Googling his name and just assuming that the first search result that came up that came up was the correct John Carmen. And I'm I'm convinced many of them were Russian bots. Because <laughs> I replied to all of them, or at least retweeted them with a quote, and only one person actually responded and said sorry. And you know, she was she uh took it as a joke as it was. But uh, most people didn't respond. Most people had like nine followers. Like, you know, that, oh. that can't be a real person. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like, like it, it hasn't made like your Twitter unusable or anything like that. No, it? no, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. I, I wanted more. Actually, I wanted <laughs> people were asking because people were asking me what I was making for dinner. Uh, apparently, a lot of people thought I would be eating crow. <laughs> and because uh, he he made a comment about shouldn't uh, are these women going to be home uh, about the women's march are these women going to be home in time to make dinner mm -hmm. and I mean really I think people took that blew it out of proportion I don't know how well, he is and politically then, otherwise and then one of the women beat him in the race and one of the women beat him in the race and that was a big yeah. thing about now uh, I'm going to eat crow for dinner uh, that's not at all what I was making for dinner. So for a few days, people were asking what I was making for dinner, which was great. I mm -hmm. mean, I wish that my boyfriend was as interested in what I'm making for dinner. <laughs> people wanted to know if I was cooking for the wife. That was a bit of an explanation there. But <laughs> but there was no conversation. It was just very one-sided. That's why I think a lot of them... How do Russian bots work? I don't know. Are they smart enough to even know what eat crow means? Yeah, and, and to that point, so they found you based on the first hit, but then they didn't. There was no interactivity or no follow up. Assuming these were real people, yeah, yeah, they that's, just that's weird. And at least one person used my misspelled version of my Twitter account. Really? Yeah. So he typed it in. He didn't copy and paste. So he was probably not a bot, but he didn't respond either when I asked him if he meant me. I, I was looking forward to it because you're a pretty amusing human being, I think. And, and you would try to engage with them and it was like nothing. Yeah. No, I was amusing myself, but then it would, <laughs> as I usually am doing on the internet, and then it would just go nowhere. That's unfortunate. Or fortunate, maybe. Because, I mean, at least your Twitter is usable. I mean, it could have it could have yeah. gotten bad. Like, yeah. I was expecting maybe some actual people who still didn't get it and, and argued with me, which mm -hmm. would have gotten really interesting. It, the problem is I have a bad temper, so I have to, like, constantly remind myself to just have fun with it and not actually <laughs> start to argue with these people. But, yeah, it went nowhere. That's amazing. Um what an interesting coincidence. It was so much milder than the time Mike Wojcik was mistaken <laughs> for a a, a UK football manager. Mm -hmm. And that was even crazier because the guy's name isn't Woy. It's Roy, but he has a speech impediment, so he pronounces it Woy. So everyone was calling him Woy as if this guy would really get a Twitter name making fun of his own speech impediment. No one must have actually thought that Woy was this Roy, but they didn't care. And they were brilliant. Or idiots, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's so hard to tell. That's amazing. Uh, Twitter in 2017, you guys. Um, let's see. Anything else What here we want to touch on? Um, uh, Katie, tell me about Elo for creatives. 
Yeah. This is Google's Ello? Yeah, Ello's back, apparently. It's a thing, again. Um, oh, no, no. This is the one. No, this oh. is Ello. Ello. No, Ello. this is not Ello. This is the, <laughs> the we're not. There's two Ellos? We're not Facebook. There's, yes. Okay. There's a. A L L O. No, this is L E. That's aloe. This yes. is aloe. No, not uh, out. Not the stuff no? you rub on a cut. No, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's good for sunburn too. <laughs> mm. So okay, what is Ello for? Okay, Ello. Apparently, I need a reminder yeah. too. Ello was that. Well, thing no that, one knew before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they came out and they're like, literally, their their marketing was, "We are going to be the competitor to, to Facebook. You are getting overrun with crap on Facebook. Come to Ello. It'll be just like Facebook, but not as crappy." That was kind of their their hit. Um, it's I think it's been like two years since it was out. Um, you you used it because I was looking for the link and I had yeah a, we were a, poking <laughs> at it a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, and... I'm, I'm on Ello because, but apparently it's it's relaunched and uh, the guy that's taken it over was like, yeah, that was dumb. We shouldn't have compared ourselves to Facebook. And um, so now it's for creatives. It's a place for creatives to go. This is what I guess he said the Ello, Ello was originally intended for. So you go to Ello. If you would go to Ello, Ello now, you either have to sign in as an artist or a fan. And so you either have like an artist area. It's almost like a magazine, like an online magazine kind of look to it now. Very is, bright. And isn't bright. that what MySpace is now? Yeah, but it's music. MySpace is still music-y, isn't it? Okay. okay. And then this is more artisty. I don't know. But you can find new artists on here. You'll post your looks things it, but it very much looks like an online magazine more than anything oh. else right now yeah here it is it's definitely it's definitely a lot more colorful than it used to be mm -hmm. um and it's all art interesting yeah so they're back but party now artsy yeah. artsy fartsy <laughs> <laughs> what am I, because it was just like the most bare bones yeah. facebook functions kind of idea mm -hmm. it's like i can make a post i can post a picture i can tag people and that was it and it was just kind of like all of us are like, oh, let's see what the new thing is. Uh, we're on it. And that was it. Yeah. Right. What was the point? Uh, last thing I posted was just figure out how to post things. Pizza. I like pizza. And 444 people have looked at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I haven't been keeping up with Milo. I wonder, yeah. I wonder if they have bots yet. <laughs> I'm trying to figure Art out bots. if I ever created an account for that. Art bots. Oh, I know I did. Yeah, I have a bunch of followers. What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with my account? What are you doing? I have two things. I have two posts, 12 following, 18 followers, <laughs> 874 views. Jeez. My background is pizza. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> it is pizza. <laughs> yeah, so visit your Ello. It's a thing in MySpace. We'll awesome. bring back Friendster. Chilla, last thing. Uh, tell me about this Windows 10 video for the Star Trek. Geeks. Oh, so I, th I thought this was really cool. I saw it on uh, Windows Central earlier today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of journal applications mm -hmm. out there and whatnot to, to log your life. Um, this one is a Star Trek inspired um, journal, and it's it's kind of like the captain's log, but it, it allows you to do video. Mm -hmm. And it's my log for Windows 10. Um, but one of the things they added to it was they actually make it look kind of like a star trek interface which i thought was kind of brilliant that's awesome I, the other thing that i thought was really cool and i actually i'm, I'm not gonna lie i haven't gotten to to fire this up on windows 10 yet but when it records the video it also does immediate voice to text translation so you get all of the text from your video and then you can add in additional photos um, animated gifs and everything and just kind of make it your own personal log um, so I thought it was a neat concept. The one, the one thing that I thought was interesting is that you can't add text entries without doing video. So it kind of forces you to do the video side. And the other complaint that I saw listed online was they don't allow you to integrate with social media. So you can't create the video and then pump it out to Facebook or, or anything like that. So it's just kind of an internal video to yourself kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. It's kind of like a, your, your own internal journal. Or if you're Matt Damon and the Martian. I haven't seen that yet. So, oh, like a, oh, spoiler alert! It's spoiler. like a blog set to private. Yes. Okay. Okay. But you, you, get it, and it looks like it just saves locally, right? So it's not getting uploaded anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was a kind of a neat way you could put down your thoughts of the day and and go back to them. And I like the fact that it auto converts everything you say to text. Nice. Oh, that is pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. So that's uh that's uh, my log for Windows Ten. Yes. Is that is in that... the Microsoft Store? The other thing that I thought was interesting is so it's it's out it. It's for any of the Windows 10 
other than the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, it's actually, you can download it on your Xbox. You can download it on your tablet and anything run on windows 10. I thought was a pretty neat way to get it out there. Nice. And the hollow lens, which I don't have a hollow lens. So yet, yet, yet. He says, I would like to say, do they actually, I mean, I see the design of next gen screens, but do they actually incorporate that into the UX at all? Like, yeah, like it's like a, the, a little, I think it's just kind of a skin from looks. Yeah, of it, it's right? like a skin. mostly a skin. I would love to see a greater incorporation. Like someone would actually create a reason for all of the details in a in a Star Trek a Star Trek screen. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. Like with our whole menu being all driven, right? And there's been that. There's been there like had to be some thought there, process to the design originally, right? Because right. I remember when they did uh, Carnegie Science Center had a Star Trek thing once where you had all the screens and they were touch screen and they're really like like designs and everything it was like in the 90s probably okay um and they had a lot of stuff from the sets and they had a green screen thing you could you know interact with so you could uh beam down to a to a to a planet and rocks would fall and you'd, you'd interact with them nice um, wow but but that was like you know it kind of makes sense for that and then you gotta think it's the 90s ui right how bad was ui in the 90s right Especially for a touchscreen, but there was some thought process. I assume someone wasn't just making it look pretty, right? They were probably considering how it might be used, and also how does it look on TV? How does it look on TV? Right, right. like is there a big button on a nineties that TV. says something? You know, right? I mean, it, it, for yeah, nineties SD, you know, kind of yeah, cathode ray, yeah. Yep. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Hey. Tricorders, right? Yeah, the tricorders. So we're we past. We're past tricorders. Yeah, we are. Now we're going back. People want tricorders to be uh, retro. Yep. People want a flip phone. People will pay extra for a flip phone nowadays. I mean, if the iPhone came out with a flip phone, there would be a line for that. Samsung's doing it. Is it? Yeah, and I think it's available in China right the now. Ra the Razer came back. Yeah, the Razer came back. I mm -hmm. mean, they, they it, it could make a comeback. Those phones were tanks. John Carmen, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, anytime. Where can people find you online and ask you what you're making for dinner? You know, a lot of people find me on Twitter, <laughs> actually. Yeah, just, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you. you. You'll put it up there, but just search for John Carmen. Apparently, I come up. Look for the funny one. Look for the first one. <laughs> for the first one. <laughs> for the first one. <laughs> John Chichilla, chillatech.net. Yeah, John Chichilla on the Facebooks, Chilla on the Twitters. There you go. And Katie Dudas. K-Dutters. K-Dutters. Most places. Yes. Really just Dutters on Ello. <laughs> <laughs> find my art on Ello. It'll be Dino. Find your pizza art on Ello. <laughs> there you go. And you and, and artistic pictures of Dino Nuggets. Nugget Chat. Nugget Chat. Coming soon to Sorgatron Media and Scarehouse Enterprises. Uh, and of course, please check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great shows coming up, uh, including the returns of shows like Panel Riot is back with a new format. Our friend Will Rutherford, who's going to be joining us, I believe, next week on this show. Uh, and he's got some friends in tow for his uh, for his own comic book podcast. A lot of great chat happening there. Because I think every TV show I watch is based on the comic book these days. Yeah. Except for Modern Family. Yeah. Yeah, probably about it. So, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Thank you, our awesome producer, Missy. Have an awesome <laughs> week. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.